Today I got a brand new HP touchscreen laptop. I'm going to do a quick little upgrade on the SSD and the memory. I'll show you how to do it. Hey guys, how's it going? Dale here. Today I got a brand new HP 15.6 inch laptop. It's a touchscreen. Um, it's got a 10th generation Core i3 in it, nothing too fancy. It um, come out of the box, the customer wants to add a little more memory to it and a bigger SSD. It's got 8 gigs of RAM and 128 gigabyte M.2 SSD. Now, um, well, when I get inside I'll explain the SSD situation. But the exact model of this is 15-DY1032MS. I'll have all the details on the screen there for you about the laptop. So I'm going to go ahead and shut it down. We're going to get inside and just get, get it done. And once it shuts off here, still on there. Now we're powered off. So we're going to flip it over. And I've already taken out these two screws on the side here. You can see I've got them laid out here. They're the same length on each side. But we do have to remove these rubber bumper strips on the bottom. They use a self-adhesive from the factory. Once you peel them off, they should go back on no problem. But if not, you can do, you, use some basic adhesive or super glue to put them back on. So, got to peel these up. <clears throat> got to be very careful. You don't want to scratch your laptop. You got to get a very thin, maybe the side of a razor knife to get it started. So I'm going to go ahead and get this one peeled up here because there's screws under here on the front and back that we have to get off. So I'm going to being right-handed, I'm going to start on the right here. You can see I got it started. Now we're just going to gently peel it up. Try not to stretch it too much. Lay it out somewhere so you don't get lint because it's very sticky, as you can hear. So I'm going to start this, get this one. Now the one in the back is about three times as thick as the one in the front, so you want to make sure you get the thick one back on the back here. So there's three screws and three screws. Now the two in the corners here where the hinges are, they're a little different type of screws. You can see they're black, so you want to get those back in the right hole. So I'm going to pop those out real quick. And when all is said and done, I am just going to do a clean install of Windows 10 20H2 edition on this. Can't get that one to come out could clone the drive if you wanted to. I have lots of videos on cloning, but in this case, it's brand new out of the box. There's no customer data gathered up on it yet. Get these screws out. <clears throat> Can't get that one to come out for some reason. As long as it's unthreaded, that's all I care about. Yeah. Alright, so I'm not going to worry too much about that. It'll fall out eventually, I'm sure. Alright, so I'm going to open it up. I'm going to use my plastic spudger tool, as always. Don't want to use any metal screwdrivers or anything metal because we have to get into the seam along the perimeter here where the palm rest meets the bottom chassis. So you don't, you don't want to booger that up because you'll be able to see it. Um, and along the edges where the ports are, you want to be really careful as well. So I'm going to start right about here. I just slip my little tool in here. I have a link down below where you can order a pack of these if you want to buy some. They're really cheap. These work really well. And all the popping is normal, so don't panic. And when you get inside your laptop, or any laptop, guys, always make sure you're protected from static electricity somehow, some way a wristband or an anti-static anti work mat. So once you get it started here, let me just do a little more. So you can see I have it started there. Just like that. So we're going to close the lid carefully, flip it back over, see if I can get a hold of that. I'm going to put a little, up, oop, little upward pressure on it careful along the back here. I 
You can see it just doesn't take much to get it off. So there. Now that we're inside, um, probably a good idea to disconnect our battery, but here's our eight gigabytes of memory right here, guys. And here's our empty slot. Here's our M.2 SSD. Um, now, on this particular model, and I see this on a lot of these HPs, don't ask me why, but this will not support an NVMe M.2 drive. It has to be a SATA. So I'm putting in a brand new Crucial um, MX500 series M.2 SATA SSD. It's a 500 gigabyte instead of the 128, but I have tried and tried and tried, and these will not run an NVMe. It has to be SATA. In fact, that's what's in here right now is the SATA M.2 drive. So the first thing I'm going to do though is remove the battery because we have to take out all these screws. There's one, two, three, four, five screws to get the battery out. Just a little precaution. Typically if you're very, very careful, but for the sake of safety, I'm going to pop the battery out real quick. If you happen to drop a screw or a tool on the motherboard while the battery's hooked up you can easily brick your motherboard you don't want to do that see it's pretty easy to get these out so now the battery simply just kind of lifts up and pulls back just like that okay and as one added precaution i'm going to open the lid and we're going to hit the power button a couple of times so let me get my finger under it There, that should be good. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pop in a stick of Samsung 8 gig 2666 memory. That's what's in here right now is 2666. So now we're going to have a total of 16 gigabytes of memory instead of just 8. And I'm going to remove the SATA SSD here. One screw. Lift that out. Put that over there. It's just a little 128. You can see it's got the A and B key on it, so right away you notice not an NVMe drive. <clears throat> and put our 500 gig Crucial in there. These are good drives, these Crucials. I use them a lot. Both NVMe and their SATA is mostly NVMe. You can see it's a pretty quick little upgrade. Not much else you can upgrade in here, guys. You could possibly do the Wi-Fi, but I believe, I'm not sure if that's Wi-Fi 6 or not. It's a 10th generation Core i3. It's got two RAM slots, it's got a touch screen, but yet you can't put an NVMe drive in there. Go figure. So we got a new drive, bare drive. We got a RAM. We're gonna put our battery back in place. Just like that, only goes one way. Once you hook that battery up, be careful with your screws and your tools. Please. I got lots of videos on cloning. Again, instead of doing a clean install, you can certainly do a clone if you want to. There's a lot of different ways to do a clone. But check out my landing page on YouTube. I got some playlists on nothing but cloning. There, we got our battery remounted, uh, our SSD and our RAM. I'm gonna go ahead and put the bottom cover back on. I'm not going to put all the screws back in until I know everything's copacetic, so to speak. Just going to gently, when you're squeezing on this, guys, always remember you got a screen under the lid here. Don't squeeze really hard on your lid. You could actually damage your screen even from the back side. So be conscious of that. All right. So for the clean install, I'm using a USB flash drive. It's got the Windows 10 install on it. You can make a 
Windows 10 install USB drive using the Windows Media Creation Tool, which you can download for, for free from Microsoft. I have a video on doing that. I'll stick a link down below where you can make one of these. And yes, Windows will activate just fine because it already has a digital license attached to it. So I'm going to go ahead and hit my power button. And it might take a minute the first time here to read that new RAM and the, and the solid state drive. So you have to be patient and make sure it actually came on. Yep, it's on. <clears throat> For it to post the first time, it's reading the RAM, the new drive. So we just have to be patient. There it goes. So it's telling me the CMOS has changed. This is totally normal. We're just going to hit enter to reboot the system. Um, telling you to check your BIOS for your setup, setup options because they've changed. So I'm just going to hit enter and it should boot now. Hopefully it should default to the flash drive to boot off of that because obviously our new SSD is not bootable yet. And we're running on battery right now. I had a, I believe a battery was fully charged, so we should be fine to do a Windows 10 clean install. You can see it's booting now. But that first post, you just have to be patient, guys. If it sits there for two minutes and don't post, shut it back off. Leave it off for about 15 seconds. Turn it back on and it should go. So now we're just going to do, oh, now my, I'm going to go ahead and hit next. Touchpad isn't working. That happens all the time on these HPs because uh, there's no driver. So I'm going to hit install now. It'll be there though eventually. So I'm going to get this into Windows real quick, guys. Here, walk through this install. It'll only take about five, six minutes, and just make sure all of our parts are reading the way they should be. Uh, once this comes up here, I want to get it started. I won't bore you with the whole install. But it'd be nice. It's a, it's going to be a nice little upgrade from 128 gig drive to to the 500 so now they can store more stuff on here and not have to worry about filling up their SSD really quick. All right guys, it finally came up. That's fine. We're going to accept the license terms here as soon as I touch the screen. There we go. Hit next. I'm just doing the touch screen because my mouse isn't there. You can plug in a USB mouse and it'll work fine, but I've had this many times with these HPs. There's our unallocated 500 gig SSD. I'm going to hit next. <clears throat> Get the Windows install going here. I'm not going to bore you with the whole install, so I'm going to let it get into Windows and I'll come back real quick and just show you that all of our parts should be in there good to go. I'll be right back. All right, guys, I just got Windows installed here. Let's just, um, I don't want to bore you with all that. I'm just going to go into actually my task manager here. Oop. And make sure everything the way it's supposed to be. Performance, memory. There's our 16 gigabytes of memory, 2667 megahertz. We're good there. Um, then I'll just go over here. And there's our new 500 gig M.2 SATA SSD. Um, so yeah, went, went pretty good. Quick clean install. I'll get all the Windows updates and drivers. A couple of things from HP's website. Uh, with a clean install, you're not going to have all the HP support and remote access software that they pre-install. If you want that stuff, you can download it through their driver update web page, but I usually don't get that stuff on here. So, yeah, everything went really good. Um, unfortunately, like I said, we couldn't put an NVMe SSD, but it does have a nice fast SATA SSD. So that's definitely better than a hard drive. All right, guys, if you like it, give me a like. If you loved it, give me a sub. Uh, check out more of my videos, and I appreciate you watching. Have a great day.